this video introduces you to Grove Music Online, an authoritative online resource for music research. In this video, I will give an introduction to Grove Music Online. I'll talk about how to search for and locate articles, including some typical searches, and we'll also address how to troubleshoot some common stumbling blocks that you might come across when you're using this resource. The Grove Dictionary of Music and Musicians is a standard reference source for music research that's known for its reliability as a source. It was first written by George Grove, who wanted to create a musical dictionary to serve musical professionals and a growing community of amateur musicians and patrons of the arts. The first printing of the dictionary came out in 1879, and at that time it included four volumes. The dictionary continued to be re-released over the years. Each time the entries got longer and the number of volumes grew. The last time it was printed was 2001 with 29 volumes. At that time it was also made available online. Grove Music Online continues to grow and updates are posted every month. It now contains over 52,000 articles that have been contributed by nearly 9,000 scholars. Grove is a good starting place for music research on a wide variety of topics. It is one of the largest reference works on Western music. The articles are considered very reliable because they are written by scholars and specialists in the field. Each article undergoes a rigorous editing process before it is published. You'll find that the entries contain a wide range of topics, including biographies, as well as summaries of historical and cultural topics. It includes subjects relating to a wide variety of musical genres, including classical, jazz, and popular music. Finally, each article is well-researched and includes a comprehensive listing of other research materials in a bibliography. There are a couple ways to get to Grove Music Online, and I'm going to walk you through two of the easiest ones. Um, the first one is through the Music Research Guide, and the second is by using a search on the library website. The first way I'll show you to get to the link for Grove Music Online is to go to the Music Research page, which is located at libguides.usask.ca forward slash music. Uh, once you're at this page, just click on the Find Dictionaries and Encyclopedias tab, and then Oxford Music Online, otherwise known as Grove Music Online, is the first link right at the top of the page. Another way that you can get to Grove Music Online is through the library homepage at library.usask.ca. In the center of the page, you see that there's a search box, and at the top there's different tabs. So I want you to click on the Databases tab, and then to do a search for either Grove Music Online or Oxford Music Online. You'll know you're looking at the right results because you can see there's a label for a database at the top of the entry, and you can see here there's a button that says Online Access. So you want to click on that link. At this point, you may be asked to enter your NCID and password, if you're working off campus. If you're already signed in, you'll know that you are because on the left hand side of the page you're going to see the library logo and you're going to see a little button that says automatically signed in. If you're not signed in, uh, you're not going to be able to see a lot of the content that's available in this database. Once you're logged in, you can start your search. Before showing you a couple searches in Grove Music Online, I'm going to give you a bit of information on what types of articles you'll find in this resource. Uh, Grove Music Online includes a number of different types of articles, including articles about people, about significant places, and about musical topics. Examples of the types of people it includes are musicians, composers, conductors, music critics, etc. Entries on people include biographical information about that person's life and work. A biographical article may include details about that individual's upbringing or their family history, their compositional style and influences, their notable compositions or collaborative works. Articles on places uh, include notable musical cities and musical styles coming from particular countries or regions. For example, you're able to find an article on the music of Canada or on a city with a long musical legacy such as Leipzig, Germany. You'll also find comprehensive articles on musical topics. You may consider topical articles if you're researching, say, the history of an instrument, including its evolution and development, or you might want to look up a musical term and find out how its interpretation has changed over time. Uh, 
Unlike a web-based search tool like Google, this database can be a little more picky when it comes to typing in a search. So I'm going to give you some tips about how to get the results that you're looking for. In general, I recommend using the search box at the top right hand side of the page to start off most of your searches. In this example, I'm going to show you how to search for a biographical article. Let's say you want to search for an article on Aaron Copland, the American composer. Uh, when you're typing in the name of the composer, I recommend just typing in the last name or if you know there are multiple people with the same last name, you might want to put in the last name and then a comma and then the first name. Once your results come up, I want to point out that at the top of the page it will tell you how many results you got. In this case we got 157 results. If you felt like this is too many results and I want to narrow it down a little bit, you could modify your search by using the limiters on the left hand side of the page. Um, take some time to scroll through them and, and get to know what your options might be. For example, if you wanted to limit by format, you could choose the article option or if you just wanted to find, say, an image of the composer, you could click Images and then Update. So here's an image that you might want to use. If you want to remove a limiter, just scroll up to the top of the page and click the X beside the uh, limiter that you want to get rid of. In this case, I want to get rid of the Images limit and just go back to all of the articles that have Aaron Copeland. Okay, so I can see a couple articles here that seem to be about Aaron Copeland and I'm going to pick this one. If you want to open it up, you just click on the title. I just want to point out a few things um, to notice when you go into an article. Uh, for most articles, you'll see a table of contents on the left hand side of the page. Uh, use these links to jump down to different sections of the article and this will save you some time instead of scrolling biographical articles such as this one will usually have a works list. The works list is a comprehensive list of that person's compositions. It includes information like dates of composition, um, the premiere date, and the scoring or orchestration. The other section that I want to point out is the bibliography. Every article in Grove should have a bibliography. Some are longer than others. This is a really useful tool for finding related research on your topic. You might want to scroll through here and take some notes of any items that you think are particularly interesting for your research topic. You'll also notice that these items in the bibliography have a link underneath that say find it in your library. I want to caution you against relying too heavily on this find it in your library button to determine if the library has access to the mentioned title. For a variety of reasons, they only work intermittently. I suggest doing a separate search in the library catalog for any book titles or journal titles that you're interested in to see if we really have access to the item. Okay, I'm back on the uh, Grove Music Online homepage and I'm going to do a different search now for an article on a musical genre. I'm going to look up an article on hip-hop music. Um, so just to keep it simple again with the search, I'm just going to put uh, just a keyword hip-hop into the search box and press enter. For this search I'm not really looking for a biographical article about someone who works in hip-hop. I want um, something on the topic of hip-hop. So I'm going to click the subject reference and then I'm going to click update. Um, you can see here from the results that I'm getting some articles about different types of hip-hop music, about some musical instruments that are used in hip-hop, and um, some musical techniques. I'm really interested in the breakbeat technique, so I'm going to click on the title and open it up. I just wanted to point out a few features of this article that uh, didn't come up in the pre previous example. Um, if you're interested in citing this article, you're going to need to um, jot down some of the information that's at the top of the page. Um, so you can see the title of the article is right here at the top, and then underneath we have the name of the author of the article. And underneath that we have a static URL. Um, this is really important to save if you want to get back to this article later. Um, if you just copy paste the URL that's in your browser bar, it will often break and not work later on. We've also got some information about when this article was published.
So I just wanted to highlight um, a few areas of confusion that might come up while you're using Grove Music Online. Uh, one of the things that comes up for folks is that sometimes you'll do a search and then it appears that there'll be multiple articles with the exact same title. And then what do you do? How do you know which one to pick? First of all, I just wanted to give you some background information on this issue. So the reason why Grove Music Online has duplicated articles sometimes is that, that is that it actually includes articles from a number of sources. So while you're searching in the website that's called Grove Music Online, they've actually added articles from the New Grove Dictionary of Music, the New Grove Dictionary of Jazz, the uh, Dictionary of American Music, and the Dictionary of Musical Instruments. This is great because you get a larger number of articles in one website, but on the other hand, sometimes there are duplications and it's hard to tell which article is the most uh, useful for your topic. The other thing that's confusing is the database doesn't explicitly tell you which source your article comes from. Typically, the entries that are found from the original Grove Dictionary of Music and Musicians are longer and more detailed than articles from these other sources. Um, but if you're unsure about whether you have the right article or whether you have the most comprehensive article, you might need to go back to your search results and actually see if there are more articles with the same topic. You might need to compare them and determine for yourself which is better for your research. Oxford has said that they're making sure that they have a way to have the longest and most comprehensive article pop up to the top of the results list, but this function doesn't always work. Another area of confusion when searching in Grove Music Online is the presence of articles on musical families that might come up while you're searching for an article on a single composer. I'll give you an example here. Uh, when you're searching for the article on Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart, you might just want to type Mozart into the search box and, you know, that'll work most of the time for most composers. So I've just done a search for uh, Mozart and you can see here the first result that comes up is for the Mozart family and then Mozart societies etc etc so um, first of all I'll just point out if you click on the Mozart family article you're gonna get a list of all of the members of this notable musical family and there's quite a few that are found in Grove Music Online um, if you were to click on one of these entries of course you get to the full article on that person Another common area of confusion when deciphering these musical families um, happens because um, often members of the same family have very similar names. Um, and so what you'll need to do here is verify which member of the Mozart family you really need. Uh, for example, do you need the Wolfgang Amadeus who was born in Salzburg in 1756? Or do you need the Wolfgang Amadeus who was born in Vienna in 1791? And make sure you double check when you're clicking on um, a composer name in one of these family lists that you have the right person. This is made even more confusing because you can see in brackets sometimes they have a nickname or a christening name alongside the birth name for that person. You can see that after the entry for the Mozart family you have to scroll quite a ways down before you get to um, the right Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart and take the time to scroll down and make sure you haven't missed the entry for your composer. Again, there's no quick or easy fix to navigating these family articles. I just want to encourage you to double check that you have the right person when you are doing your search. Uh, you might want to verify the birth dates and death dates by doing a comparative Google search. Another area of confusion in Grove Music Online can be um, doing a search and then not finding what you're looking for. Uh, there could be a variety of reasons why this is happening. Uh, one thing that I want to remind you of is just that um, the search bar in Grove Music Online is a little more finicky than something like Google and so if you're not finding what you're looking for make sure you check that you've spelled uh, the word or the name correctly and uh, make sure that you're only using one or two search terms. In this video, we discussed the history of Grove Dictionary of Music and the purpose behind it. 
We discuss some tips for uh, searching in Grove Music Online and how to find articles on a person or on a topic. And we talk through some common problems that you might experience and how to troubleshoot them.